Hello, it's got a ukulele.com. Always nice to welcome a handmade ukulele maker back onto the reviews page. Last time I featured this guy, it was for an instrument called a Nano, uh, and it went on to be one of the most popular reviews I did um, because it was such an intriguing little instrument. That was the tiny little thing made by a guy called Andy Miles of Andy's Ukuleles. He's from Berkshire in the UK. Uh, and this time he sent me one of his big guns. I say big guns. It's bigger than the Nano, but this is his Piccolo. Um, so it's a sub-soprano scale ukulele. It's a Sopranino is another name for it. And these are becoming increasingly popular at the moment. Just to give you some comparison, uh, standard soprano ukulele, there is the Piccolo. So you know, the whole thing is about as long as the, the scale, length, scale length of about 11 inches on this. Uh, these are all handmade by Andy, all solid woods obviously, uh, it's a really nice way to get an instrument and this is just an example because again I'm dealing with a handmade ukulele maker, um, he does these in a variety of woods, you could you can ask him to commission something, um, this is just an example of what he does, they don't all look like this. And this one is made from all solid uh, lace wood which is also known as London Plain and I think you will agree it's it's staggering it looks like it's two pieces but it isn't it's a single piece top and that change in the grain sort of looks like it's melting down i absolutely love it um the back is the same uh, in in reverse um same piece of wood it's just got a re it's almost a 3d effect uh, shimmer to it two piece sides which actually surprised me for such a small piece of wood with this really nice sort of speckled grain on it um the sides are wonderful and it's all put together really really nicely there are no it's so tactile no sharp edges really nicely trimmed off on the on the joints um no build issues that i can see at all all finished in a satin rubbed finish and it's just it's a nice thing it really is a nice thing really well made uh neat and tidy inside notch linings really small braces and the serial number and the label. Bridge-wise, interesting, uh, Andy always puts these through the body bridges, so the strings go through holes and you fish them out the sound hole, tie a knot and pull them back. Uh, I'm seeing these more and more and more on some particularly high-end instruments now because it transfers the vibrations into the top much better than a standard tie bar or a slotted bridge. Um, people shy away from them thinking they're difficult to change, they're not, they're just as easy to change as as a slotted bridge um, but Andy also uses these for a different reason and that is because with such a small body on a Sopranino uh, to get a slotted bridge on there or a tie bar bridge would mean a much bigger bridge plate and that's the last thing you want on the vibrating top so he gets away with the smallest bridge he can get by using this style so that's clever uh, that's a Corian uh, saddle by the way the neck is bolted on it's made of mahogany it's absolutely gorgeously finished this this sort of shaping around here it's again really really tactile uh, I love the neck on this and it's really attractive wood as well for something as plain as mahogany I just love that swirl to it um, that the good stuff continues it's topped with an ebony fingerboard uh, incidentally that bridge is ebony too and that's really nice and dark and in good condition and the edges are kind of rolled off and the end is shaped uh, it's a really really nice fingerboard um, and it's a 34 mil nut width so just because the, the overall dimensions of this are smaller that's a small instrument that's got exactly the same nut width as this Kamaka Soprano which means it's playable. Uh, if you make a small Sopranino, the last thing you want to do is make the nut smaller because it's just impossible for people with hands of my size to play them. So he makes a 34 mil nut on these and that's great. 12 nickel silver frets to the body, position markers at five, seven and 10. Thankfully they're repeated on the side. And we also have this extra fret up here called a zero fret, which helps to set the intonation. So the scale length runs from the zero fret to the bridge. And the nut, which is made of Corian, is just there for the spring, string spacing. The smaller the instrument, the more important that is, because it's harder to get accurate intonation the smaller you go. So that helps with that. Headstock. I love that. You see, what a lot of makers, and I'm looking at you, Ohana, do when they make smaller ukes like the uh, Onino, is they put a, a soprano-sized headstock on it. And it looks absolutely ridiculous. 
Andy shrunk the headstock down, as it should be. This is a small instrument. Sorry about the glare on the lights there. It's a small instrument, small headstock. He's covered that with more facing of the lacewood, which is, again, really, really pretty. And I think that just sets it off. The proportions are right. Tuners, these are unbranded uh, friction pegs, um, but good ones with lots of parts in them, so very much like Grover 4s. And what he's done in the style of Ken Timms is he shaped the buttons back to make them smaller. It gives them a vintage look, but of course it also means you've got more space up here on a very small headstock for, for tuning. Um, the strings on this are worth clears. Andy actually normally puts Aquila Piccolo strings on because most people ask him to send them tuned up a, a, an octave above C. Uh, this one is actually tuned to C F A D, so F tuning which I much prefer. I think the octave above C is just far too shrill. I don't really understand why people like it. I don't, but then it's up to you. So CFFAD. And pricing is always difficult to talk about on handmade instruments because this is just an example. Uh, and also complicated here because the way Andy sells these, because he's in such demand, is he builds an instrument, he puts it up on his Facebook page, and he lets it run as an auction. And after a certain amount of time has elapsed, the highest bidder gets it for the price they bid. It's a really fair way of pricing the instrument. He starts these at about 180. The risk there is it may go for 180, it may go for 280. But you can't argue that the price is wrong because the price is being dictated by the people. It's basically the price is what people are prepared to pay for it above his base price. Um, I think that's really fair. I've got no gripes with that at all. I think it's a really sensible way forward. Ken Timms does it as well as one or two other makers. So really nice build. Obviously it's small. It's extremely light. It's wonderful to hold. I love, I love the neck. I, I love the feel of the body. It's just a really nice thing to have. Uh, it helps that it looks really, really pretty, but you know, even on a plain instrument, a plain mahogany, this is going to feel and look nice. It's been put together extremely well. Sound-wise, now, you don't buy a Sopranino to get a sound with a richness of tone, long sustain, um, or, or tons of volume. You buy a tenor or a baritone for that. But if you're in the market for a Sopranino, you know what you're going to get. This is not shrill though, it's got a richness to the tone and the notes are really clear. I, I really like it. That's huge fun. This is, this is, I'd have this as my hotel uh, instrument. I'd take it in my laptop bag and then I'm checked into a hotel with work, end of the night, just sit on the bed and play with one of these. Uh, strummed, as you can see, really fun, really bouncy. Uh, that's the Sopranino piccolo sound. Picked though, it's, I love. Harder though. So I like the pick sound more. It's harder to play because it's small. But again, that's just practice. I've, I've, I've not been playing uh, Sopranino as much lately. But it... <laughs> I, lo I love this. I absolutely love it. In, I think it's a good time at the moment. Uh, there's a lot of buzz about Sopraninos. I can't see why people would buy the branded named ones because they always have some intonation issues or things like the big headstock or big ugly tuners. Buying uh, a Sopranino from a handmade builder, and there's a few about, we're blessed with a number in the UK, um, means you're getting people who are looking at attention to detail, like not making the headstock too big, not making the tuners too big, getting the intonation right, getting the proportions right. And they're probably cheaper than you expect them to be um, for the amount of work that's gone into them, uh, because the, the amount of work in this is similar to making a soprano. Um, 
And for that reason, I've scored this in the written review as linked below. This is as good as any Sopra Nino I've yet reviewed. So it gets a high score uh, because I think it's really well made and a lot of fun. I would happily own one of these. If you're in the market for a piccolo, um, this guy needs to be on your list. Andy's ukuleles, Lacewood Piccolo, handmade, Berkshire, UK. Back next week, some more very nice instruments coming. I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.